Yay, it's water based. Can someone just come stand here and just fan me, please? That would be great. And get some grapes too. And some ice. I'll just crack it open. Hi guys, it's Hatchel How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. As I've been saying at the beginning of every video recently, apologies for profusely sweating. We are having a blazing sunshine in London. It's 35 degrees today. It's kind of unheard of, it only happens on a rare occasion. And it's so humid here, it's ridiculous. So anyway, I wanted to do a video, just a little chit chat, sniffer palooza thing of some of the newer and unreleased niche fragrances that I've managed to get my hands on or have access to. So some of these are unreleased, some of them are new out, and some of them, even though they're not brand new, they are the latest one in the line they belong to. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So the first three I'm going to smell, four actually, are from the same house. They are all by Cana Barcelona. These three just came out. It is their Oriental collection. They have their white collection, they have their black collection. Then they have a collection that is priced higher than all of the others. I'm not sure why, and I have a new one that is coming that I'm not sure they have announced yet. At least at the time of recording this video, they have not announced it yet. So, three Orientals. The first one, I'm just going to grab them randomly, is called Amber Del Sur. They're all referencing ancient times, ancient history, Roman times. This one is about royalty and when people used to perfume their hair with very exquisite musks. And this is centered around amber <laughs> of course it's called amber del sur so it says here uh, reminiscent of a time of royalty perfume the hair with exquisite musks uh, you know i've done my training the scent of amber wafted in the air and enchanted patios bloom with florals and romance amber del sur is an aromatic tribute to the al and andalus of the past so it's got italian bergamot and before i tell you the notes the thing about Kana is their fragrances are quite easy going i find they're not too scary not too crazy and you'll find that their ingredients are very specific to a place. They don't just say patchouli, it will say Indonesian patchouli, or it will say Malabar black pepper. They, do, they don't really scrimp on ingredients, so that's what's kind of cool about them. But they are wearable, they are manageable. They're not way out there. So it's Italian bergamot, um, water jasmine in the heart, Indonesian patchouli, Australian sandalwood, and an amber accord. The base notes are myrrh, Spanish cistus, which is also known as labdanum, Venezuelan Tonka and Madagascan Vanilla. See, they specify the places all the time. So let me just spray it on this card, my handy little card that I have here. Some of these I've worn, some of them I have not worn. All of them I have smelled at one time or another. So, mm. this is to me a lot simpler than what the notes would suggest. It just feels very ambery. It's got, um, it, it's got quite a, a, a bite to it. It's got a bit of crispness. It's not an overly sugary vanilla amber. Depending on, you know, the recipe that the perfumer uses for amber, it's usually vanilla amber, patchouli, or sometimes, sorry, it's usually vanilla, patchouli, labdanum, or sometimes they switch a couple of the ingredients out, but it always has vanilla in it for sure. Sometimes amber can be really sickly sweet and powdery, and this has got quite a nice crispness to it. I can tell you that. I don't smell any bergamot in the opening at all. It's just straight in there with an amber feeling. And to me, I wouldn't buy this because I already have some ambers that I like. But if you're a fan of amber, if you collect amber fragrances, you might want to add this. There is no patchouli in here. There is no jasmine in here. I don't know. It's just very ambery. So that's that one. The next one is called Megalium. And this one says, Megalium, an ancient fragrance passed down through the ages, from a time when rose water flowed from fountains and balsams perfumed the lavish private lives of the Romans for their bathing rituals to their chambers and boudoirs. So this one is all about Bulgarian rose in the heart, but it's got two types of pepper, from what I remember, two types of cinnamon and two types of myrrh. So you've got Lao, uh, royal cinnamon essence from Lao, cinnamon tree leaves from Sri Lanka, mandarin extract, calamus essence from India, then the heart is nutmeg, then you've got pimento berry, Indian white pepper, and then Bulgarian rose, which is kind of the theme of this. And then the base notes are um, Somalian frankincense, Ethiopian myrrh, 
and Yemeni Apopanax. So Apopanax is sweetened myrrh. So let's smell this. From what I remember, this is not really about the rose. It's more about the spice. This is, this is a spicy fragrance. Of course, you have cinnamon in here, you have two types of pepper, and then you have this nice, semi-sweet, resinous feeling underneath. But it's quite light in feeling. It sounds like it would be heavier, looking at the notes, I would say. I think it would be heavier, but it's not. It's quite a lightly spiced fragrance. It's really manageable. Like I said, Kana never step beyond crazy. They're all really wearable, I think. They're kind of easygoing. They're Barcelona, they're Spanish, they're calm, you know, they're not, they're having a siesta somewhere. They're not like running around doing craziness. So that's how their fragrances are. It's reflected in them. But yeah, if you want something a tiny bit spicy, I can feel quite a bit of nutmeg in here with pepper. The rose doesn't, feel super rosy. I mean, Bulgarian roses are normally a bit more metallic than sweet anyway, so it's not jumping out as a rose to me. This is more about the spices. So that's that one. Let's put that there. And then the last one in their collection for these Orientals is Botafumiro. This one is all about cathedrals. It's all about the censers, you know, when they swing the frankincense smoke down the aisles. That's what this one's about. Um, it says, a mystical perfume that makes tribute to the cultural and religious roots of the old continent. Swinging to great heights along Santiago de Compostela Cathedral, the Botafumero sensor expels billows of scented smoke, filling the air with a deep and compelling aroma. So let me just spray it while I'm telling you the notes. The top notes are bergamot, Italian bergamot, pink pepper, uh, and Indonesian nutmeg. Then you've got, in the heart, freesia, muge, which is also known as lily of the valley. Spanish Cistus again, and Indonesian Patchouli. The base notes are Styrax resin from Honduras, Musks, and something called Mystical. What on earth is that? It makes me think of Phoebe. Ooh, Mystical. <laughs> anyway, let's smell it. Okay. Again, this is light. It's resinous, it's incense for sure, it's a bit smooth. But it's light. I don't smell bergamot in here. I don't smell any spice like pepper or nutmeg. This is like it's almost gone straight into the heart and base immediately. It's a little bit spicy, a tiny bit, but really it's like a quiet incense. That's what it smells like. It doesn't smell as complicated as it might sound from here. Lily of the Valley? Where are you? I mean, but Lily of the Valley is quite a prominent flower usually in fragrances. It's labdanum, but a very light, manageable, and friendly labdanum. I want to know what mystical is, but yeah, overall, those three to me are kind of simple. One is spicy, one is sweet amber, and one is incense, so they haven't got things really like that in their collection, so that's probably why they've made it. Now, on to this one. One second. This one I'm not sure is even announced yet. It is another Kana, and it is called Volcano. This one has my head spinning because if you've watched my videos before, I don't like Oud. I say that I don't like Oud, yet there's always a fragrance out there just waiting to bowl you over and make you change your mind and make you shut your mouth. Like Camel by Zoologist did with me. I love that fragrance, and it's essentially an Oud fragrance. Kana have released Volcano. They have another one in that line, it's, I believe, it's called Rose and Dragon or something like that. I've seen them. Anyway, they're priced higher than all of the other fragrances, I'm not sure why. Maybe ingredients, maybe blend, da 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 da. But this one, when I first smelled this, I said, huh? Is this Camel 2.0? Am I experiencing the same feelings I, I experienced when I tried Camel for the first time and fell in love with it? There is always a fragrance out there, like I said. I don't like Oud, and this is essentially an Oud fragrance. So, the notes are Bulgarian Rose, Ginger, Nutmeg in the top. The heart notes are Frankincense, Nagamotha, which is also known as Cypriol, and Patchouli. And then there's an Oud Accord in the base with Benzerin, Haitian Vetiver, which is the best Vetiver you can get. And then Labdanum. So, this says... Stuff. This perfume is lava, a fiery, fiery perfume. I don't know. This is, to me, really, really cool. This is by far my favourite Kana fragrance I've smelled. 
they're kind of hit and miss for me in general anyway. Um, the, my favourite is Sweet William from the Floral Collection. I like that kind of spicy, sparkly, carnation type smell. This is a really smooth and sweet oud. There is no dirtiness here, there's no medicinal, mushroomy, band-aid thing that people say about oud sometimes. It doesn't have that. It's immediately straight into their style, which is wearable. It's, but it doesn't feel typical. That's what's good. I've smelled a million oud fragrances and just gone, ah, 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 ah. But this one made me, my ears prick up, or my nose prick up, should I say. There's something really nice about this. The first blast of it feels like camel to me. It's not for very long, but it does, it feels like it. It's the same kind of sweet oudiness that's in camel, except that had a lot of candied fruit and it's more sweet. This is a bit sharper. And it does turn more oody when it's dry. You do start to feel the woodiness of the oud come out. But I've just thrown things everywhere. Who cares? I think this is going to be really, really popular. I predict. I just think I'm going to really want this. But it's, it's, I think it's going to be about £170 for 50 mil or something like that. So, I don't know. Try it out. Anyway, we're going to move brands. Okay? So the next one is from Pierre Guillaume. And it's part of his main line, Parfumery General. I really don't know how I feel about this line. I have smelled all of them. In fact, I have smelled every fragrance that Pierre Guillaume has ever made. And they're really hit and miss as well. They're more misses than hits for me. I mean, there's so many of them. There's about 40 in the, in the Parfumery General line. They smell nice to me, but not many of them are wow factor. There's just... I don't know, I don't know how I feel about them yet. But anyway, this is the latest one to come to that line. It's called Comarebi and it's number 9.1. Sometimes what Parfumery General, the line does, or Pierre Guillaume does, is he reinvents a fragrance or he reworks one. It's not a reformulation, it's, it's seeing it through a different way. So this is a rework of number nine, Yuzu Aberato, which is now discontinued. Thank God, it was horrible. <laughs> I did not like that fragrance at all, I think it was probably my least favourite from the line. It was a real, a, a sharp, astringent yuzu with lots of thyme, so it, it dried down to a very dry kitchen herb thyme, like dried thyme on your skin. I just didn't like it at all. Anyway, komarebi is a Japanese word, it means sunlight filtering through leaves. So Pierre Guillaume has tried to recreate that smell in this fragrance. I must say for the record, Esparta, number 26 by him, is my favourite one from the line. It gets likened to Portrait of a Lady, which is why I love it. I have both of them. So this one says, um, light passing through trees, sorry. So it has mint leaves, reseda, which is, reseda, I think I looked up, I think it's baby's breath. There is hazelnut in it and there is oak. So... Yeah, let's smell it. I've smelled this one before. I haven't worn it much, but this is essentially a very smooth mint. It's it, mint is the thing that sticks out quite a bit, and it feels a little bit waxy. So you know, like sometimes when you look at leaves and they have that waxy sheen on them, it feels like the smell of what that looks like. If that makes sense, <laughs> with some mint, it feels like a little bit tree sappy. Um, but not super foresty or mossy or anything like that. It's kind of sweet, it's very simple, and I will say that it's a floral aromatic, it says. I mean, where's the floral? I don't know, but it feels like something's a little bit missing. It's a little bit lacklustre. Again, I don't, it's not a line that I get really excited about when there's a new release, and that kind of says it all for, for me personally. There are some good ones, but there's a lot of bad ones as well. So this is essentially, like I said, a sappy, smooth, almost waxy mint smell. It's very simple and I don't think I would wear that one. So the next one is also from Pierre Guillaume, but this one is part of his um, black collection. It used to be called Houtiem Art or Outiem Art, but I think now he's just calling it the black collection. So. While this one isn't brand new out, it is the latest one in that line. There hasn't been one since. This came out maybe five months ago, possibly. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah, maybe. 
But this one, when I first smelled it, surprised me because having smelled all of P Pierre Guillaume's fragrances, I do have a feel for what his style is. And this one surprised me. I went, eh? What is this? So the whole thing about this one is super lady. Um, you don't, it, something about women don't need to wear a power suit, you know, pinstripe trousers and a suit jacket to, to feel like a super lady. You can still feel like a super lady wearing something sweet, girly and fluffy. I think it was just, and I'm going to be honest, I think this fragrance is just Pierre Guillaume's way of getting a sugary, fruity, floral thing on the market and dressing it up in this super lady thing. It doesn't feel like him at all. So anyway, it's, it smells really nice though, like having said that, it smells really nice. So this one is centered around magnolia. It has magnolia flowers, it has magnolia leaves as well. Then you have pear, blackberry, a toffee apple accord, white amber, and one other thing that I can't remember. But it's all very sweet. It's really nice. I really like the smell of it. I think it's friendly. It doesn't smell anything like a Pierre Guillaume fragrance, like I said. But it doesn't smell niche either. And that's fine. I just think that, I mean, it is really nice. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> so, Magnolia is a really nice flower to have at the forefront rather than the usual rose, jasmine thing that always happens. It's, it blends really well with this sweetness. You can't really feel any kind of toffee apple, but I can feel like a pear blackberry and sugary feeling behind. It's really smooth as well. Magnolia is a very smooth flower when you smell it. And I really like this. I'd never wear it, it's not my style, but it's definitely very sellable. And I think a lot of women who like fruity florals will like this for sure. It's easy, it's easy going. It's a pear blackberry magnolia kind of sugary thing and there's not much more to say about it because again like I said it's simple. So we're moving on to another brand. So this is another fragrance that I don't think is out yet. It is going to be the new fragrance from Arquiste and it's called Sydney Rockpool. They Admittedly, I'm a fan of them. I, I really like Arki's fragrance, especially Namban. I'd say that, I mean, twice a day, all the time. So, this, this is a brand that I am excited about when there's a new release. And they have not got a marine fragrance or an aquatic or a sea salty or anything like that fragrance in their collection as yet. They've got florals, they've got some spices, they have some gourmands, they have orientals. But they do not have one like this. This is a bright blue bottle. It's really nice. I've seen it, I've smelled it, I've put it on my skin. And I don't even know what the notes are. <laughs> but um, I usually like Arquiste fragrances. But this one I don't. Let me smell it. I've smelled it a couple of times. I don't think this one feels like Arquiste. It doesn't feel like their usual thing. So it's really hard to, to describe it. But ultimately it's... It smells somewhere between coconut and fig, which it's nice, it smells nice, but I just wanted more. I wanted more, moreness from it. I wanted it to be much more muchier. That's all I'm saying. There's a floral in there. There's definitely coconut in here, but perfumers are tricky, tricky little tricksters, and they play with your perception because coconut and fig can sometimes be interchangeable. It's the same like with almond and cherries. Sometimes they can smell the same or different, like, you don't know which one you're smelling. So it's it's a coconutty slash figgy type thing with a little bit of salty aquaticness going on. And it's really light as well. There is a floral in here too, but it's understated. It's quite a meaty kind of coconut thing that you can smell above all. And it feels a little bit powdery around the edges as well. So. This one's tough. I'm just going to quickly see if I can find any notes on it because I haven't seen any, so bear with. Ah, I found the notes. So the notes are um, Mineral Accord, Skin Accord, whatever that is, Australian Sandalwood, Coconut, Driftwood Accord, Clary Sage Essence, ja Sambac Jasmine, Narcissus, which is Daffodil, Frangipani, Amber Max. What is Amber Max? sea salt and seaweed so on paper 
That sounds amazing. That sounds really, really cool to me. Sound like jasmine, salt, daffodil, minerals. And really, all I smell is a, a salty coconut sort of thing with a little bit of floral that isn't jasmine. It's very soft. That's it, that's all I can say. It doesn't smell as complex as the notes would suggest. Either it's very well blended, or things have become overshadowed. One of two things is happening here, people. Oh my gosh, I hear thunder. This is the first time it has rained in two weeks. I reckon it's gonna pour down hard, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. You will never hear an English person say they're looking forward to rain. Anyway, moving on. The next three are from Angela Champagna. She has just released three white fragrances. She has two red fragrances, she has two extras, and then she has a whole bunch of purple ones. These are the white ones. I have done a spotlight video on Angela Champagna if you wanna hear more about any of her fragrances. I did the whole line, overview, sniff them, kinda of like this. And um, I'll post a link to that if you want. So she has made, first of all, which I think is really cute, a, fra a fragrance for children, it's called Letitia. It's a water-based fragrance, so it's safe for kids to use. It has melon in it. It has melon and watermelon, so two types of melon. Um, some musks, I think, a bit of vanilla and cyclamen or cyclamen. It's very cute. It's a clear, it's like a cloudy white liquid and it's the bottle is turquoise and white. It's very pretty. I'll try and find a picture so I can put it in the video. Oh, you're not gonna spray, are you, Letitia? Ooh. I'll just crack it open. Let's just do this, yay. It's water-based, if it spills it doesn't matter. So, Letitia. Angela Champagna has a very distinct style. I've always said that. So, she has a very, very distinct style. She's an Italian perfumer. She lives in a place called Atri on the Adriatic Sea. It's a small town, coastal town. Her fragrances all have this kind of coldness to them. And this one is really cute, but it does have that cold mineral feeling, even though it's for kids. I can't really smell melon. It's probably, it's very difficult to smell after smelling some of these ouds, I'm not gonna lie. My nose has gone a bit funny from smelling a lot of orientals there and a big oud. But it feels watery, it smells watery. It feels kind of like fresh melony, as opposed to a candy sweet kid melon. It feels very natural and it's really nice and she made it because in the days gone by, in the days of yore, perfume houses would always have at least one offering for children in their collections. So she's trying to pay homage to that, I guess, by doing that again, making a, a kid-friendly fragrance. It's a good way to get the little blighters involved, isn't it, at a young age? If I know that if I had a fragrance made for kids when I was a kid, I would have been even more obsessed than I am now. So that one's... It's cool, it's watery, it's it's just a bit friendly. And I just spilt it all over the table. Yay, it's water-based! So the other two of hers, one is called Materia, and the other one is called Miracula. These are, again, extras of, from her. Most of hers are Eau de Parfum, but she has a couple of extras. They come in the more chunky square bottles. I know one of these is a labdanum, and one of them is a tuberose. So this is Materia. This one is the labdanum one. This feels incense-y, it's very crisp. Again, it has a kind of mineral feeling behind. That's just her thing. That's just how she rolls. This actually doesn't smell too far off one of her other extras. I think it's they're called Ignes and Fawny. This is To The Earth. Uh, the notes are dark woods, labdanum, musk, metallic accord, real Mysore sandalwood, and patchouli. So, yeah, she has real Mysore sandalwood in another fragrance of hers called Ignes, I think, or it's Fawny, but that she uses really good ingredients in her extras. She has this gorgeous tobacco absolute in one of them. This is really light, it's really simple. It's centered around labdanum, again, the same as uh, Botifumero, I think. And it's kind of smooth, but all of her fragrances have this quietness about them. They're a little bit cold, they're a little bit transparent, and her style is so distinct. You almost have to go like that to smell them. 
which is not always a bad thing. For me it is, I like my things to have a bit of punch and a bit of bite, but they're very subtly beautiful, I would say, her fragrances. It's definitely loved in them. Um, it doesn't really feel smoky or anything like that. It's not really multifaceted. I can't smell the patchouli either. It definitely smells mineral. Mineral, salty, labdanum. That's what she's gone for here. Well, that's what it smells like here. Very simple. I hope this sun weather is not messing up my nose because everything doesn't really s smell very um, strong today. So this is Miracula. I know this one is a strange one. This is essentially a tuberose fragrance. This is this is much better than the other one, I think. So this is, I would call this an unconventional tuberose. It's actually really cool. On skin, I tried it, I wasn't too fond. So, let me have a look. It's a, it's more, this is a tuberose, but it's more a green tuberose. It's not tuberose in a traditional sense, where it's luscious and heady and, you know, like carnal flower. It's not that type of tuberose. It's much more planty in this one, which I'm really liking actually on the card. I'm going to spray this one on my skin actually because I've sprayed it on my skin before, but I was in a perfume saturated environment. So it's got, if you smelled Elephant by Zoologist, it has this green leaves accord in it. There's a similar thing going on here with this one, but where Elephant was sandalwood and coconut. This is tuberose and green leaves. It's quite interesting, actually. So the notes are cyclamen, which is the same that's in her little uh, Letitia one. Green leaves, Sicilian lemon, amber, tuberose absolute, ambrette seeds, bourbon vanilla, darkwoods, and musk tonkin. So it's quite a simple composition again. She doesn't really have mega long note lists in her fragrances. But this is really lovely. It's lovely and a little bit abstract. The tube rose, like I said, it isn't a super jumpy outy tube rose. It's quiet. It's ref it's re reserved kind of. I've never smelled tube rose be so quiet. Tube rose always shouts very loudly, and this is a green stemmy tube rose with a little bit of something else floral going on. I don't know. It doesn't really feel sweet, like vanilla or anything like that, <clears throat> or musky. It's all about the heart, this one here. Green leaves and tuberose. Again, simple. This isn't a super multifaceted fragrance. Anyway, a few left. People are going crazy outside. <laughs> so the next one is called Flashback in New York, and it's from Olfactive Studio. This came out a month or two ago. It's not super brand new, but it is the latest one from Olfactive Studio. I really like them as a line. Panorama in particular is my favourite from them and also Close Up, the tobacco one. So this brand create fragrances and then they have a photographer take a photo which captures the fragrance. I originally thought it was the other way around. I thought they got photographers to take a photo and then they created the fragrance. But from what I read recently, it's the other way around. So this one is flashback in New York. The picture to go with it, I don't know if you're gonna see it on camera, is a snowy New York street at night time and this fragrance is about, I'll put the picture in the video anyway, this fragrance is about when it's really cold outside and you're really cozy inside. You know, looking at the snow falling from the comfort of your rocking chair or your squidgy armchair or whatever. And the notes are really lovely actually, so it has clary sage, cumin and saffron in the top. Then in the heart there is jasmine, leather and violet leaf. And the base notes are birch tar which is the note that's responsible for smokiness in a fragrance. Papyrus, tonka beans, and vetiver. I like this one. I think it's really cool. It's kind of cosy. You can feel a lot of the notes in here, which is lovely. Your nose is kind of, what am I smelling? What am I doing? It's, a, it's ultimately, to me, it's a, a dry, leathery vetiver. So the papyrus makes it feel dry, and a little bit fuzzy. The leather and vetiver work really well together without feeling too grassy or too leather jacket. There isn't too much smoke. I think the birch tar in here is just a touch to give it that extra bit of wintry, you know, like bonfire smoke or a coal fire smoke or something like that. But it isn't super smoky. It's more about this vetiver papyrus 
Um, what's the other thing I said? Vetiver papyrus leather type thing. And then there's this cool clary sage thing. You can just feel, clary sage smells a bit like tea to me. And you can just feel this little bit of something that's like a green tea, tea sort of note in there, a bit vegetal, but really it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy and dry. And it's really nice actually. And that's another one I want to put on my skin too right now, just so I can. This is a really nice one. It's, their fragrances are actually really cool. Um, I haven't really worn many of them as a longevity test. I've sprayed a lot of them on my skin, but I haven't really worn a lot of them in terms of f for a full day. So that's flashback in New York. So there's only two left. The last two are from Frappan. This is another brand that I'm still trying to figure out if I like them or not. There's none of them. I've smelled all of their collection and there's none that, that make me think, I must have this in my collection right now. There are some that are kind of cool. 1270 is really nice. Uh, speakeasy, speakeasy is really nice, but they're both quite sweet, and I don't really wear super, super sweet things. So they've released two recently. One is called Isle of Man, and one is called Lascarina. Isle of Man is, of course, based on the Isle of Man, the place in England. Um, and I think it's a boxer. Something about a boxer, if I remember rightly. Have I got something muddled up here? Let me just reference my phone for a second. Okay, so it's not about the boxer, I was totally wrong. There's, they do have a fragrance that's inspired by some sort of boxer though. So this is inspired by the island itself, the, um, the motorbike races that happen there, really dangerous motorbike races, and it's the island versus the man. I'm taking these notes from Bloom Perfumery site, by the way. It's um, supposed to be based on quite a classic formula. For a pan, of course, are cognac makers that by trade, but they have a fragrance line. So this has basil, orange and grapefruit in the top. The heart is sea salt, violet leaf and freesia. I'm seeing salt becoming a trend. Just gonna say, I just feel like marines and salt are on the uprise. Hopefully they will stamp out the oud trend. Not likely. And the base notes are Haitian vetiver, musk, and then something called ironwood. I don't know what that is. I'm sure it's some sort of fantasy accord, but this feels like you can definitely, it's one of the saltiest fragrances I've smelled. You can really feel salt to me in a fragrance is hard to describe because it's not a smell, it's more of a texture. This has a salty texture smell to it. And it's got a really nice combination of citruses. It's a bit fuzzy again. And it definitely feels a little bit like a classic cologne. But the salt outweighs the citrus, so that overtakes. It's not really super woody or anything like that. I don't know what this ironwood is, but I wish it was something that was massive. When I see a note like that that's invented or something that I've never seen, I just want it to be really prominent so I can really feel what it is and go, ah, oh, that must be that, but I can't figure it out. It's a salty citrus fragrance. It's pleasant enough. It's quite calming, I think. It's kind of, it's kind of easy on the nose. Nothing too scary here, but with Frappan, I really can't figure them out. I can't, I appreciate their fragrances and I like the way they're constructed and everything. I just, none of them, I, I don't, I've never bought one. I don't, I've never even had an inclination to buy one, so. It's almost got a bit of sharpness, like a very sharp wood. Oh, that went straight to my brain, that smell. Ooh, that was weird. And the last one is Lascarina. This one has a huge backstory. Lascarina was some warrior lady that served in the Russian army, but the fragrance is a tribute to Greece and the Mediterranean. So, ooh, the notes are uh, bergamot, grapefruit, pear, and pink pepper in the top. But, and then the heart is orange blossom and Bulgarian rose. The base notes are black pepper, iris, frankincense, and ambroxan. So, I smell a whole bunch of ambroxan in this. If you don't know what that is, it is a scent molecule. Um, it's something that you get from clary sage. It smells bright, metallic, clean, kind of woody. There's a whole bunch of it in Etat Libre Durange's, Durange, Durange's fragrance called Herman, etc, etc, etc. I don't know, the name's really long. but. 
it's essentially slightly citrusy, but I, I can really smell Ambroxan. I think the weather is really messing things up, either this or my nose, or both, everything at once. I don't really smell rose in it. I can feel a little bit of orange blossom, like a citrusy, slightly peppery orange blossom with tons of Ambroxan in it. So there's black pepper in the base and pink pepper in the top, so that's giving it its light spice. Hmm. It's underwhelming, again. Isle of Man is a little bit more interesting. This feels a little bit too transparent and characterless, I don't know. It's clean. It doesn't make me think of Greece or any kind of Mediterranean place like that. It actually feels quite cold and a little bit synthetic, so that's a shame. Anyway, that's what I'm going to say about that one. I'm not too fond. Anyway, guys, so that is it. That's my quick, not even quick, was it? It was quite long. <laughs> my little chit-chat, smelling of things, and um, I hope you liked it. I'll probably do this quite often when, there's, when I can gather enough bunches of stuff to smell them and share them with you. So, for now, that was Pierre Guillaume. Parfumé General, Kana, Arquiste, Olfactive Studio, Frappan, Houtiem Art, and Angela Champagne's newest-ish things. So anyway, I'm Archon Mano, click below, go down there to subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Take care, and if you're in England, I hope you didn't get caught in this rainstorm. Okay, bye guys.